Aztec Eagles, the 201st Squadron, Chapter 1, Distant Neighbors Find a Common Enemy. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, no. Holly back here on the slant. Hope you enjoyed our series on the Aztec Eagles. Uh, amazing history from World War II and Mexico and the U.S. And this uh, just deep and fascinating relationship we have with each other that to this day still goes on. So uh, make sure you check out those other videos and the channel that you are subscribed to us. Consider becoming a member. And please comment on this video let me know what you think and how we're doing so we're going to continue our reading of the preview that's available on amazon this is chapter one distant neighbors find a common enemy it was only thanks to the u.s that mexico took part in the second world war through the 201st Squadron, securing its place on the side of the victors. The most remarkable aspect of the matter is that the two countries had been historic enemies with few cordial periods, one of which was the presidency of Porfirio Diaz, and remained so until the late 1930s, when the great conflagration began. Tensions were rife between the two countries from 1823 to 1939, with armed interventions north to south, attempts at declaring war, diplomatic pressures, and massacres and acts of vengeance from both sides, albeit on different scales. In 1847, a war started by the U.S. ended with the occupation of northern Mexico and the capital and with the eventual hoisting of the U.S. flag at the Palacio Nacional. For a few weeks, with the Mexican government in disarray, U.S. General Winfield Scott acted as military governor of Mexico. After the war and having taken for itself over half the territory of ancient Mexico, the Titan of the North took every opportunity to reopen the debate regarding the claims to the demarcation of the new border. Most, not no, most noteworthy, almost to the point of sparking another invasion, <laughs> was a dispute over the construction of the Pacific Transcontinental Railroad. The U.S. had its sights set on a new frontier, not only that not only involved the absorption of the small area named La Mesilla through which the railway would pass, but it also had designs on the peninsula of Baja California and the states of Sonora, Sinaloa, Durango, Chihuahua. Mexico was informed that the U.S. was prepared to go to war once again if the former refused to sell La Mesilla and that the superpower would not hesitate to take away another half of that territory if this relatively minor matter was not resolved immediately. I want to remind you guys again to please comment. Let me know what you think of this series. And also to share with us any uh, stories of your own families as far as World War II, maybe great-grandfathers, grandfathers that you had uh, and got to share some of their stories as I have my grandfather and his brother, my great-uncle, uh participated in the uh battle and uh, freedom of manila so there you go all right let us continue the enduring peace of the porfirio diaz presidency was underpinned by generous concessions made by diaz to american companies who understood that they no longer needed armies in order to extract whatever they needed from their neighbors to the south tensions were reignited during the mexican revolution and threats of another intervention were hinted at most explicit, explicitly in 1914 in the port city of Veracruz. In 1916, Francisco, Francisco Villa pillaged the small town of Columbus in New Mexico. The American public were, were baying for his blood and sought retributions against those living south of the Rio Grande. The Great Depression of the 1930s stoked an animosity towards Mexicans in the States, and soaring unemployment was swiftly responded to with mass deportations. With almost 2 million people of Mexican origin were deported over the course of the decade, despite the fact that many of them had been born in the United States. 
President Hoover promulgated laws prohibiting the employment of Mexicans by birth or ethnic background. The naturalization of oil reserves and the expropriation of foreign industries by President Losado Cárdenas in 1938 sparked whispered rumors of a new war. The U.S. was prepared to intervene once again in Mexico. Great Britain and other European nations joined them in expressing their intent to recover what they were owed. It seemed inevitable that the history of the military intervention of 1862 was to repeat itself. But with the onset of the Second World War, America, American and British diplomats began to realize that the threat greater than that posed by Mexico's nationalist policies was circling above their cities. The country's priorities had shifted. Miraculously, President Losario uh, Cárdenas escaped reprisals. The Second World War. And before I begin, please make sure you are commenting and make sure you check out all three of our videos, including this one on the series of the Aztec Eagles, the Second World War. In 1939, Mexico was a country devastated by four catastrophic decades, 10 years of economic crisis, 1900 and 1910, followed by the Civil War and rounded off by the Global Depression. In the wake of the Mexican Revolution and mass deportations of the 30s, hostility between the Mexicans and Americans had reached had had reached boiling point, had reached a boiling point. The majority of the population from Chihuahua to Yucatan knew nothing of the U.S. beyond memories of invasions, disputes, exploitation, government privileges, and the constant air of menace, always one way. For this reason, when news came that the land of Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln had come under attack from a mightier power, the Rome-Berlin-Tokyo axis, many Mexicans quietly celebrated. The revolution at home had veered towards the left, and there was a strong undercurrent of sympathy with the Soviet Union. Mexico decided in the first instance to remain neutral in the Second World War and capitalize on the conflict by selling raw materials indiscriminately to Germany and to the States. Also in 1935, Arthur Dietrich, who would play a fundamental role, was appointed chief of the press office at the embassy in Mexico. His mission? to turn public opinion in favor of Yahtzeeism and against the Allies. From the embassy, the money flowed to publishers' pockets to finance a good number of publications, magazines, and newspapers, which would be distributed massively among the population, especially the upper and the middle and upper classes. Dietrich subsidized existing papers, including those with the largest circulations, Excelsior, El Universal, and novidades, to print editorials, propaganda, and news that were favorable to the rank and to put the allies as imperialist monsters. Many opinion articles in El Universal and Excelsior describe the United States as Mexico's greatest enemy, Nazi propagandists, and the writers for hire extolled Germany's struggle against European imperialism and compared it it to Mexico's resistance to the arrogant United States. They also exploited the fear of the middle class, especially businessmen, for communism. However, disquiet was stirring in the country. Thanks to propaganda from German operators through radio programs, mailings of flyers, and in particular the magazine Timon, headed up by Jose Vasconcelos, uh, the, the former Secretary of Education. Vasconcelos did not hide his sympathy with the Nazis. Yahtzee, excuse me. The Mexican people may be largely German file, German no oh God, I can't say that word. And we believe that indeed they are. But the reason for this is precisely that they see in the rupture of contemporary international order a kind of liberation, he wrote. Dr. Attel a painter famous throughout Mexico considered Yahtzeeism to be the solution to global problems. In 1940, ex-revolutionary Adolfo Leon Osorio exhorted Mexico to expel all Jews. And although the government aligned itself with the U.S. from 1939 onwards, most opinion leaders were openly supporting against Franklin Roosevelt. Wow! What a tease of a first chapter. Can you imagine? There we lay our story. 40 years of this boiling, 40 horrible decades from 1900 to 1940. 
I mean, you have everything from a dictator, Porfirio Diaz, like the worst of the worst, and that caused the um, this uh, revolution of the teens, of the aughts, teens, then uh, just turmoil, and then, of course, the Great Depression. I mean, it is a powder keg waiting to happen, and this is an amazing start. I am going to get two copies of this book, one for myself and one that I will give away to a new member of the channel. And I am so excited about this. This history is fascinating. A lot I did not know, but now I know a little bit more. Okay, don't forget to check out all three videos of the Aztec Eagles. That was chapter one. We'll see you soon here on the channel. Please like, please share, and subscribe. Paz y de ligas. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. This lamp? Yeah, but is this the unplugged version? I don't know. I think, I think it's the unplugged version. All right, Paul, let's go. <laughs>